Then I came to UAB. We had one season last year. I signed probably 16 recruits. I'm going to go find that and have it up on the screen so you can see it in the first year. And then this is the second year. All right. So notice right here. First and foremost, this is the like most important thing before I even go. Oh, what's good, man? My name is Flimlo Raps, and today we got another episode of our UAB Dynasty. Now, people have been asking me to do a little bit more recruiting. You know, so I thought I was doing a lot, but people want a little bit more recruiting, uh, maybe a little bit more in depth. Um, so, what I decided to do with this UAB video will be a little bit different. It'll be my keys to recruit. Now, people always ask me, man, what's the best way to do this? What's the best way to do that? I just, I don't believe in that shit. And the reason is, the reason that is, is because I know there's other people on YouTube and there's other people I know who have, who have success in recruiting. They don't recruit the same way that I do. So what I'm saying is, it's not one way to do fucking anything in life, I don't believe. However, I'll give you my insight on kind of how I recruit on this game, and I'll give you a little bit of background as to how I develop this strategy. So before I jump into it, I kind of tell you how I develop the strategy that I, that I developed, and it's not based on, like when I developed this shit, I wasn't even watching YouTube. So this is not something I got from somebody else. This is something me and my partner DJ, AKA Trip Boy, this is some shit we literally developed on our own. And it's nothing crazy, it's relatively simple. So here it is. How you set up your board in the beginning is completely your business. If you're starting with a lower end team, even if you're starting a higher end team, I always recommend going after interested guys that you want. If your team sucks, you want everybody that's above like a fucking 68. If he's a 68 and better, and you were like a one-star school, you want him. Later on, he needs to be like a 74, 75 at least coming into the program to even make sense to keep. So once you put your guys on your board, I don't care if you're putting 10 people, 15 people, or if you're filling it up, in my opinion, that shit really doesn't matter. But what you want to do in the beginning, obviously you want to scout everybody. You need to find out, like spend all your points to, on the off season or the preseason and the first week, as many points as you need on scouting these cats on your board and finding out who is really who, you know what I'm saying? Because some cats say they're this good, but they end up being this good. Obviously, you don't know what you're recruiting until you scout. Now, real quick, for those of y'all who might not be familiar with the series, maybe you came in through this video right here. This is a, a UAB series. It was a Coach Carousel series. I did one season at Mississippi State as a coordinator. Then I came to UAB. We had one season last year. I signed probably 16 recruits. I'm going to go find that and have it up on the screen so you can see it in the first year. And then this is the second year. All right. So notice right here. First and foremost, this is the like most important thing before I even go any further. I spend and I recommend that you spend all of your points, all your head coach points on recruiting in the beginning. Do these game management shits make it easier when you play the game? Absolutely. But can you win without it? I don't know, you gotta answer that question. But I always play without this shit until this is completely maxed out, okay? This scouting skill is so important. You just gotta do it one time, find out everything about them instead of having to go over three weeks trying to figure out who this guy is. I don't put that much emphasis on Locksmith because, you know, if you locking me out, like if a prospect is locking me out, I mean, I'ma generally just say fuck him and, and move on. So, I, you know, I clicked it one time, but I'm not that big on that. Um, as you can kind of see where I'm going through with this, I went ahead and maxed this out because I had a couple extra points in the off season knowing that I'm gonna need these opener points before I'm gonna need these closer points. You feel me? Uh, the letter of intent joins for the off season is very important. Kitchen sink so you get those extra 200 points each week is key. Like, So a lot of this shit is so important. It's so big as far as recruiting, man. Like this, it starts here. You know what I'm saying? You gotta start here. All right, now the next thing is focus on 10 people or who, however many it is like once you max out your guys you want to max these main people out you know what i'm saying and what happens is along over time 
For instance, this dude right here, I'm 1,500 points behind, he can dip, you know? This cat right here, I'm that far behind, he can dip. Now, you could keep him and try to go after him. You might get him. I don't even, I just say fuck it, like, in, in those situations. I'm going to just drop him. Him, I'm going to give him a chance, right? These cats, I kind of had a few points left because I, I had to scout the first week. So I didn't have enough to fill up all these dudes. So I kind of just threw them some points just to see what they would do. You know what I'm saying? See if they throw me on the list. This cat jumps up to number one. Then you got to come back and match that with his scouting. And yeah, I think he's worth, he's definitely worth going after. He's worth going after. Keep in mind, I'm a two-star school, right? So that's why these prospects ain't the best, but they're going to help my program. Then this guy, he can dip. Unless he's first on my list, you know, I don't like going after ass recruits. <laughs> like, to me, this dude sucks. So, though he's hella high on the list, I'm going to go I'm gonna go without him. I'm going to go without him. I'm going to boot him. All right, so everybody maxed out. Obviously, I got some points left over. Uh, make sure nobody's coming in. All right, everybody scouted. Okay, cool. Now, I generally don't offer scholarships unless you're first on my list. Like if you're first on my list and I have my shit maxed out where I can get Insta commits, then I'll offer. Other than that, I generally don't. I don't offer as soon. But I'm gonna go ahead in this case because I got three people. So I'm gonna go ahead and offer them. I don't have Insta commit a lot yet on this dynasty. So, you know, I'm not gonna get any Insta commits. If I did, I'd take the 700 off and then offer them. So cool, here we go. We got 1,500 points left. That's two more guys. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to take into consideration. You got to scout them and then to max them out. So we go back in here. Now on NCAA 14, we have what I call <laughs> rejects. Rejects are good-ass prospects who aren't being recruited. Every single time you go through and you can clear up your list because you either signed a bunch of people or a few people or you had to throw some people off the list because you were getting too far behind, come back in here, check out your rejects. Easiest way to find these guys is by going over to lock percentage, sorting, and then, you know, the lower the lock percentage, the less that they're being recruited. For instance, this guy's got 14. Look at his interest in all these schools. If you flip that, obviously a guy that's got 100, you know he's gonna be signed already. But if you go to somebody like this, it's early on, you go to somebody like this, it's early on in the game, so it's not going to be that deep. But 48%, see, you know, he's halfway full on North Carolina. So for you to come on cold turkey, catch them, and then pass them, it's going to be very difficult. Not impossible, but very difficult. I'm not taking that route, especially if I'm a two-star school. I'm not trying to compare myself. I'm, I'm trying to compete with these bigger programs directly. I'm trying to compete with them indirectly by going out to cats that they not showing no interest in. Also thinking about the positions that I need. Got a couple athletes right here that could possibly play several different things. I'll grab them, grab this guy. And I'm also looking at the overalls too, right? Cause you know, guy can go up or down, but if the overall is too low, you know, overall 62, he go up 10 points. He's still only a 72. So uh, I like to look at the, the beginning overall, and that's kind of how I'll pick. Especially right now, I only got one spot left, and there's so many people. I was going to throw somebody else on the list. I'm not really seeing anybody. There's more cats in there, but instead of me sorting through all of them, let me just come do this and take care of this. Okay, so I got an athlete right here who is an 80 overall, which is great, obviously. He's pretty good at everything. And see, these are the guys that I, I've never been a big fan of because I'm like, okay, he's not fast. He's 87, 89. He can catch. He can run routes. Whereas his to release his hand, he can counter throw. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's not going to get in any one spot and be an amazing player. Even though he's a really good all-around player, he's not gonna be the type of cat that's really gonna change the dynamics of. So let's look at these other guys, and we can see that a lot of them suck. Got one more dude. He's ass also. All right, fuck. 
So we really didn't get much of nothing in there. Oh, fuck. All right, so we go ahead and go out to Stokes. I guess he'll be a pretty good power running back. I don't know. I already have a quarterback that's a freshman. I just know he's explosive. I just know it. I just knew it. But I even I already knew it. You know what I'm saying? So let's do this. You want to distribute all the points that you have available, obviously. I'm just trying to, without counting, get the set behind it. All right. Cool. So that's all the points. So I guess because people always ask me about this, I'll just, in this UAB series, like while I'm doing it, I kind of go through the thought process and make this a series of how to recruit in NCAA 14. Or, you know, how I think, how I recruit in NCAA 14. And we'll roll like that. So if you got some useful information, please click the thumbs up button. Keep in mind, this will continue. So I'll continue to give some more jewels as we go forward and as this thing progresses. I wish I would have started this in the off season or in the preseason, but I think y'all kind of caught what I was saying as far as that part of it. So yeah, you didn't really need to see that shit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. My name is Flimlo Raps. Wow. I just want to tell y'all, man, I started a second YouTube channel. Uh, go check that out. The link is in the description. It's not a gaming channel. It's basically the other side of Flimlo Rap. So that's going to be the music. That's going to be the business stuff. That's going to be just the mentality and the mindset 